Marcus Anderson. Marcus Anderson is very unique in the Mega Markle Disposable Friends series because Marcus is indispensable. Without Marcus Anderson, I hope to prove to you in this video that Meghan Markle wouldn't have the level of global fame that she enjoys now, or infamy, depends <laughs> how you look at it. But I really don't think she would be in the position she's in without Marcus Anderson. Now, Marcus started off at Soho House London as a waiter, and he worked his way up. Now, this is an astounding story in itself. He worked his way up to global membership director and he was a global membership director when he first met Megan. Now his job was to go to a new city wherever they were opening up a new Soho house and his job was to find the best and the brightest of that city to invite to the founding members party. And they didn't just invite anybody. To be a founding member, you really had to be somebody in the social scene of the city where they were opening up. Now, it always worried me that all of the biographers that have done books on Meghan Markle and also a lot of people that have done interviews and magazine articles sort of imply that just because she was in suits, that that was how she met Marcus Anderson in Canada. And that always worried me because I knew that in those early seasons of Suits, they pretty much weren't on the map with many people. And I couldn't see that Marcus Anderson would necessarily meet her. And I doubted that she would have the cachet to be at the opening night party. But these were just all my own ideas and I couldn't really prove anything, but it niggled at me. And so I went for a bit of a deep dive and I found the Toronto Life social pages and they reported on the opening night of the Toronto Soho house. And it was very interesting to see who they mentioned in that column. Now, I would assume that if the cast from Suits were invited to that opening night founding members party, which is the most, that is the party, that is the one that you want to get into if you're going to ever be anybody. If you're not in that opening night party, then pretty much anyone who's a founding member probably wouldn't bother socialising with you. You're just not really on the same rank. When I read this article, I'll read to you who attended that opening night party. Now, members from other Soho houses came in huge, huge stars. Kristen Stewart, Kate Hudson, Matt Damon, Kira Knightley, Jude Law, Bruce Willis, Amy Adams, Bradley Cooper, Dustin Hoffman, Niamh Watts, Zac Efron and Jennifer Lawrence all turned up and partied till four in the morning. Now, as far as the Toronto social set goes, there weren't a lot of people that really were named in this article other than Jessica and Ben Mulroney and Corey Vitiello. Now, Corey Vitiello hasn't really featured with many people. He gets mentioned, but he was a real big shot in Toronto. Around the time that Soho House opened, he was the bee's knees, I'm telling you. He was the hottest chef with the hottest restaurant, and anybody who was anybody knew Corey Vitiello. Now, it was reported in this social column that Corey Vitiello turned up at the founding member's party with a new squeeze on his arm. This is September the 15th, 2013. Now, Megan and Trevor's divorce came through in August 2013. Now, I'm going to take a leap here, and I may be wrong, and it's just personal opinion, and I admit I may be wrong, but I think that new squeeze that wasn't named in the social column was Meghan Markle. Now, the story that Meghan gives is that she did a review on Corey's restaurant later that year, and that that's how they met. But I'm not so sure about that because it's also said at the time that he had an established girlfriend and that she got the short shift when Megan came along. And I'm just wondering, I may be wrong, but I think that that would have got her into that founding members party. I can't see 
that she would have got in without being on the arm of Corey Vitiello. So that's the assertion I'm making, but like I said, I might be wrong. So we'll move on a little bit now, and it's it's really complicated, this story. So I'm going to sort of give it an analogy of a tree. So we've got Prince Harry at the top of the tree. That's what I want you to imagine. And then we've got Meghan Markle needing to build branches to climb up on to get to the top of the tree. And I've been fascinated to see the amount of branches that were built. Now, if they were built or just happened by lucky chance, serendipity, well, she's a very lucky girl. If it was more contrived than that, I'll leave you to decide. So she's in Toronto, she's in Soho House, and she gets introduced by Marcus Anderson, to Ben and Jessica Mulroney. Now they're well and truly part of Canada's elite. They're right up there. And then by extension, there's introductions to Sophie Trudeau. And you can see that Megan is starting to enter into Canada's sort of social elite. I don't believe that she could have held her position just from that opening night party at Soho House with that Corey being on her arm. I think he was vital to future dinner parties, to future invitations, to future nights at his restaurant as his girlfriend. I just don't think she would have the chops to last without being somebody by extension through Corey. Now, of course, as Suits took off more and became more popular and became more well-known, particularly in Canada, well then, yes, I don't think she would necessarily have needed Corey anymore. But for that initial branch, I think she needed Corey. She obviously needed Marcus Anderson, but she was definitely on her way. But Megan never rests on her laurels. And in 2013, she was a really busy girl. And she was over in the UK, and that is when she was at that global gift sort of influencer big event that she met Lizzie Cundy at the pre-event uh, dinner. Now, there was someone else at that pre-event dinner, and it was Boris Becker, and he had been booked to talk at the One Young World Summit. And Megan had worked very hard to get a spot at that One Young World Summit as a counsellor. So she and Corey Vitiello went over and Boris Becker, as a favour, introduced her, gave her an introduction to his agent, who was Gina Nelthorpe Cowan. Now, you can go back and watch my video on Gina Nelthorpe Cowan and the unfortunate ending to that relationship. But you can see that she's building branches in the UK. She's got Lizzie Cundy. She's got Boris Becker. And she's saying to Lizzie Cundy that she's interested in the Made in Chelsea reality show. And I don't think that was an accident because I think she was thinking not so much about the show, but she was thinking about meeting some eligible aristocratic young man who could be a boyfriend that would get her into the social set in the UK. Now, getting into the social set in the UK is very different, particularly if you want to get Bill Branches up to Harry, because it's to do with the aristocracy. You don't have to have a title or be aristocratic in order to mix in those circles. But you generally have to be known by somebody who knows somebody else or used to go out with someone in their set. But you have to have some entry point. They don't take kindly to complete strangers and certainly not uh, actresses on cable drama series. Now, she's still with Corey and she turns up to uh, an event at the Miami Soho House. And it is there that one of the most important introductions took place. Mission Nanu. That was when Marcus Anderson introduced her to Misha. And they got on like a house on fire, and this has been well documented. Misha's even said it in an interview. But what interests me about that is that they met at that lunch 
And by that night, they were pretty much best buddies and Megan had arranged to turn up at New York Fashion Week as Misha's new best buddy to see her latest collection. Now, you may think, oh, what was she after? Like free fashion? Like what what was the deal here? Well, Misha at the time was married to Alexander Gilks and he was an old Etonian that knew William and knew Harry. And I think he was in the year sort of in between Harry and William. But he knew them and he mixed in all that social set. Like I said, if you're going to penetrate that sort of English aristocracy, you've got to have an inn. And Misha was married to a fabulous inn. Now that sort of led to a bit of a dead branch because Misha actually broke up with Alexander and so (laughs) we can break off that one. But they're still mates and uh, Misha also introduced her to someone extremely valuable. So we've got Marcus Anderson introducing her to Misha and also introducing her to Ben and Jessica Mulroney And then now you've got Misha introducing her to Eugenie. So you can see now that the Canadian branch of Marcus Anderson is extending to Misha Nanu and then that's now extending, hopping across the pond to Eugenie. But Megan already had some quite good contacts revving up via the Boris Becker introduction to Gina Nelthorp Cowan, which enabled her to get more work in the UK, which took her over there, which no doubt gave her opportunities to party at the London Soho House and maybe reinforce her relationship or or burgeoning friendship with Eugenie. So as the branches keep stacking up, we can see that If anybody wanted to say, well, who is this person? Oh, she knows Misha or she knows Eugenie or do you see? And that's extremely important. So the friendship continues. And like I said, we saw Marcus Anderson popping up on her Instagram feed. Now, people have asked me, did Uh, were they in a relationship? And I looked into that very, very deeply. And I can say categorically that I can find no evidence of a romance. To me, they were just really good mates. So you can see now that the branches are nearly there. We're, We're up there, baby. We're at Wimbledon. We're wearing Ralph Lauren. We know Eugenie. We know Misha. We know Violet. And Violet was crucial too because Violet's parents are best mates with Prince Charles and also Violet's younger sister was rumoured to have gone out at one stage with Prince Harry. So new best bud Violet, oh they're having a wonderful time together and they take a cute little photograph with a little snapchatty doggy face on and who should spy it but Prince Harry. So the next time that we really spot Marcus on the radar is he's sitting next to Megan at the opening ceremony of the Invictus Games. And it's amazing when you look at that footage back because you realise just how far Prince Harry has dropped. Just how far he's just slumped in stature. Because at that stage, it was Prince Harry opening up the Invictus Games in Canada and people treated him like a prince. People respected him. People were excited. People thought he was somebody. And now it's just so very different. Now, in the course of this, I looked into all the rumours about Marcus Anderson and particularly the one about him supposedly being a partner of Omid Scobie. I went looking for that with a completely open mind. And I didn't find anything, but I did find something that convinced me that that's not true. After a lot of searching, I sourced it back to a very clickbaity sort of lower 
rag, online rag, that had a very clickbaity title. But when you clicked into it, it said that there was no evidence to back up that any of the headline was actually true. And I believe, looking at the dates of when that started spreading around social media, I believe someone viewed this clickbaity, trashy article, tweeted about it without bothering to read it, and hence, off you go. It's off and flying. But there's one thing I have learned about Marcus Anderson. He is very discreet. He is the perfect person to be a highly paid consultant now for Soho House because he never puts a foot wrong. He never says anything about anyone. He knows and everybody all around the world that you would want to know. The very rich, the very connected. Anybody who is anybody would be in Marcus Anderson's little black book. And he's never betrayed a confidence. He's never made a slip. There's nothing. He's amazing. They really couldn't have picked anyone better for his position. As far as the other stories, and I'm not going to really spell them out, but you know the stories I mean about Marcus fulfilling another role with Meghan Markle and about there being lovely sailing days on the beautiful <laughs> blue ocean. I didn't find any evidence and I've got to tell you, I am glad I didn't. Because when you think about it, when you think about the tree, when you think about the branches that I showed you, how they were built and how they led one to the other, to the other, to the other, you wouldn't want that other story because that would have just ended up with her on the bottom branches and never getting any higher. Because if any of that story was true, there's no way she would have got anywhere near because that is too trashy, too tawdry. Somebody would have stopped her on her way up if any of that was true. It just doesn't make sense because people like that don't get to be the girlfriend of royalty. They get to be uh, at parties with royalty, but they don't get to be the girlfriend or engaged or married to royalty. Now, the other thing about the beautiful blue ocean and lovely trips in boats is that Lady C herself actually debunked a major one. Some, this was ages ago she debunked this. It was a friend of hers yacht and there was a girl on the yacht that looked very similar to Meghan Markle. And she had the sort of Panama sun hat on and the glasses and a black bikini and long black hair. And to look at it, you would think, oh, yes, that's definitely Meghan Markle. It did not work out. It was actually a friend of this friend of Lady C's daughters. And it was their yacht. And it wasn't Meghan Markle. And that is the main photo that keeps sort of cropping up all over the internet. Other photos where it's someone who looks like Meghan Markle with <laughs> Prince Andrew on a yacht, it just doesn't make sense because the age of Prince Andrew in these photos, which may have been photoshopped, I don't know, would have made Meghan about 10 or 12. It just doesn't make sense. So I didn't find anything to back up that. But I don't think that you need any of that nefarious, exciting story sort of whipping around Marcus Anderson and Meghan Markle because the actual story and the way these branches and introductions were built is fascinating enough. And you can see that if she hadn't have met Marcus Anderson back in 2013, there's no way she would have ever met Harry. So I hope you found that interesting. And I've got to tell you the most interesting thing about the Marcus and Meghan story is I don't think it's over. I think it's got many, many, many years to run. Now, a lot of my USA viewers have often expressed their concern that Meghan Markle has some sort of political ambitions. Now, when I first heard that a few years ago, I sort of scoffed because I dismissed her as someone who is quite canny and, an, and a good actress, but I didn't think that she would have the chops to be able to <laughs> build a tree to the top 
of the USA presidency. I just couldn't see how she could actually manage to do that. But having investigated this story and seen how it unfolded over those three or four years and how it ended, I'm not so sure now. I think that, you know, the path to the presidency is built over many, many, many years. And that's another reason why I don't believe the more nefarious, tawdry rumours about Marcus and Meghan Markle, because she's too smart. If she has ambitions for the presidency, there is no way she would jeopardise her chances of that with any behaviour that could come back to haunt her at a later date. It just doesn't make sense. But do I think that Marcus has the connections or Megan has the connections to make her way to that, to become president of the United States by maybe, I don't know, 2032? Yeah, I think she does. But what's going to be interesting to see is, does she have enough of the general public actually admiring and liking her? She has to have a major rebrand, a major personality reboot, <laughs> because when those ideas were first being muted, she was at sort of a, at the height of her popularity. And now I'm not so sure. But then again, a lot of people dislike Donald Trump and he got there. So, you know, you just have to have enough people admiring you, I guess, and you can get there. So it's going to be interesting to see how everything unfolds. And it was interesting, wasn't it, to see how she sort of had branches being built in the UK and branches being built in Canada and how it all came together in the end. I'll see you again very soon. Bye.